All right, it's the first day of classes. We're getting ready to leave for the school. A little nervous and excited at the same time. Got a bunch of stuff to take. We'll see what, uh, what the crowd turnout is like. The crowd turnout. Yeah, that was one of the surprises that awaited me that day. You know, I'm thinking back to my first vlog about this trip before I left on the journey. I predicted it would be life-changing, and it was, in some unexpected ways. This is a story about things I learned from teaching in India. The assumptions I made, maybe because I was away too long, didn't pay attention to the right things, and overestimated progress. I remember a few days before we left DC, my wife and I were super anxious. We weren't sure how to prepare and who would be in our classes. This was our first time teaching. The school asked me to teach computers to parents of low-income students, but I had no idea how much they already knew. So I prepared everything. Everything from basic mouse skills to website development and video production. Okay, we are en route to Sandipani School, Sarjapur, um, taking an Uber, which is convenient and comfortable too. Now, as well prepared as I was, I could have ended up teaching YouTube to people who don't even have internet access. That seems impossible for India in this day and age, right? And we've arrived. set up in that computer lab. I hope we'll get access soon. Yeah, I look nervous. I wanted to be there three hours before start time just to make sure everything was ready. I had my sleek MacBook, keynote presentation, video, VR headsets, camera gear for vlogging. I wanted everything to be set so I could focus on the people. Then they arrived. The icebreaker was the most revealing. So I want somebody to volunteer to introduce your partner, not yourself, someone else. Uh, okay. <laughs> no one had ever used a mouse, the internet, or email. And when I asked them why they were there to learn about computers, the answers were all similar. They wanted to support their child's education. If their kids were learning about computers at school, the parents knew that they better understand them too so they could help their kids. By the end of the first class, everyone had learned how to use a mouse, open a browser, and search for things on Google. When I asked them what they'd like to learn on the second day of class, one of the women replied, how can I find a work-from-home job on the internet. Many of the others just wanted to find more activities they could do with their children. They wanted to give their kids an opportunity they never had. I'm sweating bullets. I'm really happy with the audience we got. This is the audience I wanted to teach. Even though it's it's a, it's a tough it's a tough audience to teach, but they're so willing to learn. It's amazing. They want to learn, and there's. And they want to a need. Kids, which is awesome. I have to mention that as soon as my colleagues back home knew that I was going to teach, they helped me create a video for my class to talk about their own work in technology. I played this video multiple times for the class. It was the coolest way to connect distant places. Everyone loved it. On the second day, we played with my virtual reality headset and then focused on email. 
Yes, email. We take it for granted and complain that we get too much. But you should have seen their faces when they sent their first email to me. It was priceless. Since I returned home, many people have said to me, it must have been a really rewarding experience, huh? I can't find that feeling of pride and accomplishment. Maybe on the surface it's there once in a while, but more so, deep inside, I feel a longing. I feel incomplete because I know what I left behind, and I know I only scratched the surface. There's so much more to be done. We created email addresses, searched the internet, and they had so much fun. Awesome. I could do this every day for the rest of my life. <laughs>